When we undertake a long journey, we usually follow a map, a map prepared by others who have taken the same journey before us. The Book of Acts can prove a rather long journey, regardless of how quickly we pass through it. The structure of the Book of Acts, otherwise called its discourse or its outline, can best be learned from its contents. Those contents include themes that occur repeatedly, movements from place to place, changes in the actors, and various summary statements provided by the author. What follows is my attempt to discern the structure of the Book of Acts. As we study through the book, we may have opportunity to modify this structure. You can download this structure as a document by the link provided below. If you can spare a few minutes, let me show you some of the highlights of the structure which I shall follow as we study through the book. Let's get into it. The book of the Acts of the Apostles of Jesus Christ can be analyzed as consisting of seven main sections. These we've called Jesus Promises Power for Witness to the Nations. Secondly, the Apostles' Witness in Jerusalem and Judea. Thirdly, Christian Believers' Witness in Judea and Samaria. Fourthly, the Apostles' Witness to Gentiles, that is, non-Jews. Fifthly, the Jerusalem Church affirms the conversion of Gentiles. In the sixth section, Paul preaches the gospel to the Greeks, and in the final and seventh section, Paul preaches the gospel to the Romans. Let's expand each of these points briefly, without my reading all the details. Jesus promises power for witness to nations. This prologue to the entire book has at least two parts. A. The Holy Spirit will come with power for witness. And B. Jesus is exalted into heaven. As a summary statement to this section, in verse 11 we read, This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The second section the Apostles' Witness in Jerusalem and Judea, describes how the church in Jerusalem is planted or started or established. Followed by a section summary, the Lord added to their numbers day by day those who were being saved. Point B, the church in Jerusalem expands, again with several sub-points, Ending with this summary, so the word of God spread, the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. In the third section or movement, believers witness in Judea and Samaria. Point A describes how Jewish authorities murder Stephen and launch a pogrom following his preaching of the gospel. With this summary, they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. Point B, Philip preaches the gospel beyond Jerusalem. Leading to this summary, Philip preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Caesarea being on the coast, he could not go farther without drowning in the sea. Point C, Jesus appoints Saul, whom we call Paul, an apostle to the Gentiles. With this summary result, then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria grew in numbers. The Conversion of St. Paul Section 4, The Apostles' Witness to Gentiles Point A, Gentiles believe the gospel and are saved. With a section summary, to the Gentiles also, God has granted repentance that leads to life. Point B, the Syrian Antioch church is planted and the Jerusalem church is persecuted. With this summary, 
the word of God continued to increase and to spread. Point C. Barnabas and Saul plant churches in Cyprus and in Asia Minor. Leading to this summary, God had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. Section 5. The Jerusalem Church affirms the conversion of Gentiles. Point A. The apostles and the elders convene a council in Jerusalem. The question before the assembly was this. Must Gentiles first become Jewish in order to be saved? The outcome was that the apostles and the elders affirm Gentile salvation. With this summary, Paul and Barnabas stayed in Antioch teaching and preaching the word of the Lord. Point B, after some time, Paul forms another missionary team. With this summary, so the churches were strengthened in faith and grew daily in numbers. Section 6. Section 6. Paul preaches the gospel to the Greeks. Point A. He preaches the gospel in Macedonia. With this summary, the word of God had been proclaimed by Paul. Point B. Paul preaches the gospel in Achaia, mainly to two of the primary Greek cities, in Athens and in Corinth, to demonstrate that the Roman officials at this time had no particular quarrel with Christian teaching or doctrine, we read, Gallio was not concerned by any of these things. Point C, Paul preaches the gospel in Asia Minor, including Antioch and Ephesus, and in summary, in this way the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. Followed by point D, opposition grows against Paul. With a summary, he had to say to the Ephesian elders they would not see his face again. Last main section, Paul preaches the gospel to the Romans. Point A, the Romans arrest Paul in Jerusalem. In summary, Jesus appeared to Paul and said, As you have testified to the truth about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify in Rome also. Point B, Paul preaches the gospel to Roman authorities in Caesarea. With this summary, this man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. Point C, Paul preaches the gospel on his way to Rome, both aboard ship and to residents of Malta, where they supplied us with everything we needed. And lastly, Paul preaches the gospel in Rome, first to Roman Jews and then to all who came to him. In summary, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ. We invite you to download this outline and follow it along with other Bible study tools as you make your own study of the very rich, spiritually powerful Book of the Acts of the Apostles of Jesus Christ.